Hello everyone and welcome back to the Dragon's Den. I'm Greg B, as always, uh, and today I'm not actually going to be talking about board games. I'm going to be talking about tabletop RPGs instead, so not too far afield, but something a little bit different. Specifically, today uh, I wanted to talk about tabletop RPGs and the skill systems that they frequently employ. So I'm going to be talking about what I've identified as the two sort of major skill systems that are used in contemporary RPGs. I'm going to be looking at their pros and cons, and I'm going to be thinking about how they relate to one another and what makes each of them unique and in what areas they really excel. So uh, the first place to start is probably going to be just talking about what I have identified as the two major types of skill systems in RPGs. Caveat before we begin, this is all my language. Um, this isn't something you know that you'll probably find in other places of the internet. These are just my observations as a player, as an infrequent GM. These are just the observations that I have made about systems and how I think that they should be classified. The first system, first type of system, is what I have called absolute improvement systems. These are systems where you, whenever you want to make a check, you roll a die and then you add a number which represents your skill or your attribute or whatever it is that you're testing. Once you have the combination of the die roll and the number, that's going to give you your total check and that's compared against a difficulty number or target number and that determines the difficulty of the skill test. So difficulty is dynamic. It's going to change based on the situation that you're in and your skill the bonus is going to be static. Every time it improves, it's going to increase by one or more, but each plus one bonus is basically the same as every other plus one bonus from any source. So that's why I call it absolute improvement because each step of the way is identical. On the other hand, you've got uh, what I call marginal improvement systems. So these are systems where instead of having a difficulty number that is determined externally and a skill represented by a bonus, you have a skill represented by a number, usually between 1 and 100, and when you make a check against that skill, you have to roll a D percentile, and if you roll under, then you succeed on the check. Um, the reason that I call these marginal improvement skills is because whenever you increase, even though you're technically increasing you know, by 1 one hundredth of a chance to roll under that number, uh, there are actually diminishing returns the higher your skill goes. So for example, if you improve your skill from 1 to 2, that represents a 100% increase in your chance to succeed. Whereas when you go from a 2 to a 3, that really only represents a 50% increase in your chance to succeed. So the higher you go, the less each point is worth, though it is obviously still to your benefit to specialize. So these are sort of what I've broadly identified as the two different types of skill systems, and they fit into different types of games appropriately. Absolute improvement systems, you may recognize this as being very common to Dungeons & Dragons. It's probably the most recognizable skill system uh, in RPGs today. It is very controllable. Uh, as players improve, they get a real sense of progression and they get real control over how good they are relative to certain things. You know, if you have been facing lots of DC 14, DC 16 challenges, you're going to skill up to the point where those become trivial, and then you feel like, yes, I've reached the next milestone. So that's very rewarding for the player, and it also means that, okay, that's where I want to get to. That's the level at which I'm comfortable succeeding. Average, obviously, you know, sometimes you can roll a 20, sometimes you can roll a 1, but, you know, you take, take 10 on a roll, add your thing, that's the bonus that you're comfortable at, and you can pivot to focus on other skills, other attributes, things like that. I like absolute improvement systems for that exact reason, because it does have really a sense of accomplishment when you move from one tier to the next, and also is highly, highly controllable. One of the cons, really the biggest con, when dealing with an absolute improvement system is going to be simply the fact that your numbers are going up without any real boundary. You know, there's no asymptotic relationship. You're just going to go up and up and up and up and up. So in a system especially like 3.5, this got really out of hand. It wasn't outside the realm of possibility to have characters with a plus 40 bonus or higher in a specific skill while still being decently competent at other skills. So when you have these sorts of numbers getting out of hand, that can lead to just a lot of like exhaustion and fatigue for the players and also for the DM because you have to keep track of these numbers and you have to constantly scale your encounters up in that way. Marginal improvement systems are pretty much exactly the opposite. Marginal improvement systems, I find, tend to shine in 
scenarios where the system and the game wants players to feel the weight. It wants them to feel the oppression of the system. It wants them to feel danger. It wants them to never be sure of what's going to happen. So a perfect system for this is Only War. Only War is a tabletop RPG set in the Warhammer 40k universe. You play as Imperial Guardsmen, who are basically cannon fodder. So the fact that you most of the time have this you know, chance of failure hanging over your head is really important, and it actually represents sort of a, a marriage of form and function. But it can be very frustrating for players who have, you know, 80 is a, a very high skill in a marginal improvement system. You know, you've got a rating from 1 to 100, basically. 80 is very, very good. 80 represents someone who is considered probably close to the pinnacle of their craft, um, and it represents someone who's invested a lot of time and a lot of training and a lot of effort into one specific skill. But on an unmodified roll, 80 still means that you're going to be missing 20% of the time. That has never really felt good to me. Um, I, and again, I, I recognize that it has its place. I recognize that games that have marginal improvement systems tend to be more oppressive. They want the player to feel the weight, but it can just be really, really frustrating. On the other hand, because you know, even at 20, you always have a 20% chance of success on an unmodified roll. These systems can also lend themselves to examples of just extraordinary heroism. So overall, I think the term that I would use for marginal improvement systems is less controllable as opposed to worst. You know, they're personally not my cup of tea, but I, I understand the appeal and I understand their function within an RPG context. So there we go. That's a look at uh, what I've identified as two of sort of the major families of skill systems in tabletop RPGs today. Let us know uh, in the comments below, on Facebook, wherever you like, if you think that we left anything out. If you think that, you know, marginal skill systems are way better and I missed something that was really integral to an understanding and an appreciation of those systems, let us know. If you think that absolute improvement systems are highly overrated, let us know that too. We look forward to hearing from you. And thank you very much for joining us in the Dragon's Den.